Hello, everyone, and welcome to another new episode of ESL Talk. We hope you've had a chance to listen to last week's insightful episode on writing and publishing for ESL. We know we learned a lot from our guest, Jackie, and we hope you did too. We definitely did. And this week, we're going to take a glimpse into the topic of our first expert teacher webinar, which we actually had to reschedule to June the 13th. So the good news is if you weren't able to make it um, with the time we originally scheduled, we are going to be having a bigger, better, and even more uh, content-packed webinar on June the 13th. Um, we're going to be talking about our own insecurities, the issues we face, and the experiences that we went through starting our own online businesses. We're also going to be chatting to Kate and Ian from English Anywhere about how they help teachers in the same situation. And they'll just share with you a little bit about what they do so that will help you for the webinar on June 13th. And I just want to remind our listeners that our first exclusive expert teacher webinar will be taking place on June 13th at 1130 a.m. for PST, uh, the specific standard time, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you're on the East Coast, 7.30 p.m. GMT and 8.30 p.m. CST. And we will then dive deeper into the hows and whys when creating your online business. And you will also be able to ask questions and network with other amazing ESL teachers. Yeah, I talked to a lot of teachers who did want to make the original date and they couldn't just because of the time. Luckily, we had some scheduling conflicts, so we were able to, to push it back slightly, which is great for everyone. So if you weren't able to sign up for the original date, um, make sure to head over to esltalk.com, the website to register. And if you're a patron, you can actually join us free for that webinar simply by heading over to the website. It starts from as little as $3 a month. And with that, you get exclusive access to a huge range of benefits, which are all on our page. So we look forward to seeing you all on the 13th for the first of many expert webinars. And so speaking of building our own online business, let's start with our experiences and maybe talk about our hits and misses. Mm -hmm. We've had a few. So Daniel, yeah, what are some things you wish you knew before you started your own online teaching business? I wish that I had a step-by-step -step guide of what was required, what I had to do, what was needed, because when you're starting something and you don't know all the variables, it's very time-consuming, it's very exhausting, it's very tiring. Um, so actually, I did have you know, a crumb of a business, which I developed very slowly. And it was only after I took some programs, did some training, spoke to some different people mm -hmm. that I really found out what was needed. So I had the material. Where was I going to find the students? How was I going to find the students? How was I going to charge them and build them? Did I have an invoicing system? Did I have a learning platform? These are things we've talked yeah. about a little bit in previous episodes, but just kind of knowing the hows and the whys and the whats was really um, something that I wish I knew because I kind of had to figure it out on my own. And when you don't know certain things and you're not even aware of certain things, it can be a lot more of a time consuming process. What about for you, Faye? What was your experience? Yeah, um, very similar. I just, you just really feel like your loss at the beginning because I think if initially we all think oh I could do this you know I can start my own online business and then when you really get started you realize you're way out of your depth there I really wish I, as well I really wish I had had some guidance on where to start and what to prioritize like a lot of people I kind of started by just creating Instagram videos mm -hmm. and stuff like that and I feel like a lot of my time and energy and all that I wouldn't say it was wasted but it was kind of misplaced so and I think we also I, don't know where to start either right Faye some people think oh I need a website yeah. first well actually I learned that that's probably right. one of the last things you need you don't even need one at all so that's a really key example I think as well yeah content is key material is key do you need to have all your courses already done no should you have an outline yes probably but again Without the guidance and without going through it, it's really hard to know where to begin. But luckily, like I said, we'll be able to share a little bit today with you, mm -hmm. with Ian and Kate, and mm -hmm. hopefully in the webinar as well. So Faye, was there any training or course that you wish you'd done before you started your business and started teaching online by yourself? Yeah, actually, it was only about a year after I had started my Instagram account or maybe a little bit less than that, but only a, a, a while after that, I actually uh, learned about uh, Kate and Ian's content calendar, which is, was one thing that really helped me. What do I post? What's actually useful? And kind of like helping you like every day, here's what you can post and just taking that pressure off. I found that that really helped me. And I wish I had gotten that when I started, right, for example. Right. Yep. So just like all these little things that are out there, but we don't necessarily know they are. Mm -hmm. um, 
So there are these courses and their trainings and or webinars like the one coming up mm -hmm. that exist that sometimes we end up waiting too long to do. You've done a couple of courses as well, right? Yeah. So something as simple as, like you said, like a, a daily plan or an outline of what you have to do every day for content, like that's such a time saver. It's huge. Um, I have done a few different courses, a few different programs, and some were great and I got a lot out of them. Some were okay. And I didn't get much out of them and some were a total waste of time. So it's really hard again. Yeah. Where do you start? Where yeah, do you go? Because when you're looking for information, you might think that, oh, this sounds good. I'll have a look at this. Or this sounds good. And and again, when you're trying to find things that might be free, it's really hard to get the real information. Yeah. Um, again, you know, we don't want teachers to pay hundreds or thousands of dollars for programs like, like others no. have done and, and not get a good experience. So I think um, one course that I did was the Teacher Entrepreneur Challenge, and that was just something that was quite simple, quite low cost, quite low risk. But it talked me, it talked me through the steps of, okay, how do I set myself up for social media? What do I post? What is my niche exactly? How do I set up my niche? How do I differentiate myself from others? How do I connect with my potential audience and my learners? How do I connect with them when I talk to them one-to-one? -one? Um, how do I set up a payment system? How do I set up a contract, an agreement that I'm going to follow with mm -hmm. my learners? Um, so all those kinds of things, again, you know, it's not everything is not comprehensive, but it gives me a really good foundation. So it saves me time and energy and effort. So if there's a spreadsheet there that I can just download and use, great, that saved me hours. Um, so little things like that were yeah, wonderful exactly. and they really helped me. What about for you, Faye? Yeah, I, I really wish I had um, been more, more proactive in finding those ESL specific courses for ESL teachers. Um, mm -hmm. I actually did a course, like an Instagram marketing course from Udemy that was a total waste of time and money. <laughs> that was just like, like so repetitive and totally not applicable to our situation as educators. Right. So I think that just looking for those products and those courses, like you said, you don't have to spend hundreds or thousands, no. but just those things that are catered to us as professionals and made by people mm -hmm. like us right. really, really helps. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Now, what are some of the challenges that you find on a daily basis now with your own business? So one key one is motivation. If you're by yourself, mm -hmm. you don't have anyone prodding you, pushing you, making you do things. Obviously, with our podcast, Faye, we tend to have to push each other sometimes because yeah. we want to make sure we get things out on a, you know, in, in good time and things are of a good quality. So that's something I found is, is tricky as motivation. Um, and I find by setting goals and having short-term, medium, long-term goals, um, that's something that can really help you. And that's something that we will discuss further in the webinar on June 13th. Um, so goal mm -hmm. setting and motivation is really important. Another challenge that I have is how do I constantly refine and innovate what I have? So I have programs that I've developed that I really, you know, put a lot of time and effort into, but I need to keep upgrading them. I need to keep developing them. I need to yeah. keep making sure they're fresh and that they're, you know, they meet the needs of my learners. And then I've had some learners who've gone through all of my materials. So where do I go next? What do I do next? So I've got to be creating new things and that's a challenge. How do I still engage yeah. and, and find the right content and the, the right material that's going to help my learners? So mm -hmm. those are some big challenges that I face. Um, and then again, is the consistency. You know, if you have your own business, you might not make, you know, thousands every month. There might be one or two months where you make a good amount and some months you make less or, you know, a little less. That exactly. kind of comes into different income mm -hmm. sources and income streams, again, which is something we'll talk about um, in the webinar. And we'll, we'll hear a little bit more from Kate and Ian about shortly. Um, but that's another really big thing is keeping all those income sources open and adding to them. You can't just stand still. We hear yeah. this term passive income and we think, oh, I'm done. And we'll know it has to be nurtured. It has to, you know, mm -hmm. if you have... Um, if you have water sources or you have a well outside your house, you can't just let it just stay there. You've got to maintain it. You've got to make sure it's, you know, it's, it's kept into a good condition and that you keep feeding those things and making it safe and making sure that, you know, that the, the paths are as wide open as possible. So that's really important as well when it comes to your, um, your income streams and making sure you're not challenged financially. Um, and I yeah. think just the last thing is, is time is a challenge of time, organizing your time, setting a schedule and trying your best to stick to it and saying, these are the hours that I'm going to do this and this and scheduling everything out. I'm going to spend an hour on contacting and following up with students. I'm going to spend an hour on sending invoices. I'm going to send an hour on processing payments. I'm going to spend an hour on uh, upgrading my um, content, my material, uploading content material. So 
those are some things you can do. Um, like I said, we will be able to help you with some of that and Kate and Ian will be able to help you with some of that as well. But these are some of the common challenges I've that I've faced. Um, what about for you, Faye? What are some challenges you've faced? The biggest thing for me now that I'm facing currently is the fact that when you're self-employed, you basically, you're, you're just always working. You don't get to take time off. You know, we, we traveled to Brazil. We're here now spending time with family, but Mm-hmm. I'm still working and we, we all get sick and, you know, I still have to work. If I don't teach my conversation classes, nobody else will. I don't, I can't right. call in a sub, um, you know, and I still have to advertise my course for next month because, you know, I'll be back in Canada then and all that. And, you know, it's just, it, it's not like when you are working for a school or a university and you just go on vacation, you go on vacation. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you're never really off. You're always kind of tethered. Um, yeah, to your I think business. that's huge. Yeah. I would say now, so. do you think that uh, teaching business needs to be a full time venture, Daniel? Do you think it's possible to do this part time or a side I, hustle? I think mm-hmm. when you're starting out, absolutely start off as, as a part time venture and, you know, just dedicate what time you can to it um, because it's a huge journey and a huge step to just be like, okay, I'm giving up everything. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to quit this because. That's security for you. So some people chip away at it bit by bit and that works for them. It is it is a lot more difficult than just saying, I'm going to do this full time and straight straight away. And a lot, of, a lot of people who've just quit their job or they've just stopped what they're doing to focus solely on their business, they, they're they in a position where they can't fail. And that's a sink or swim kind of situation. And that works for some people. It really motivates them and mm-hmm. keeps them honest and focused and motivated. Yeah. But for some people, they still need that, you know, side side hustle or that, you know, that that something. Um, so I would say it could be both, depending on your type of personality and the situation you're in. For me, um, I reached a stage where I was kind of fed up with the job that I was doing, and I just said, "Enough is enough. I'm done. I'm going to quit." And then I said, "Okay." December was the month where I said, "Right, I'm just going to dedicate all of December to getting my business up to a certain position," and I think I came really strong out of the mm-hmm. gates and my motivation is starting to, to wane a little bit. But the beautiful thing is, like I've mentioned many times, my teaching, my student, you know, teaching of my students and teaching my students one-to-one in groups, that's just a little part of what I do. So instead of just focusing all day, every day on one yeah. thing, it's I'm teaching my one-to-one students today. I'm teaching my group students tomorrow. I'm doing my podcast with Faye on Thursday. I'm doing this on yeah, Friday. Exactly. Um, and that's the real yeah. difference between 40 hours a week, 20 bucks an hour working for a company or working in a school or whatever it is compared to, wow, I can actually have some time for me. So Monday, I kind of have a a half day where I do some stuff I want to do and get prepped for the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, pretty intense, pretty hard all day, every day. And then Friday, okay, just finish in the afternoon, three, four o'clock. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing, which you can't really have in a conventional bricks and mortar setting but it requires work it requires dedication it requires Mm -hmm. you know a lot of a lot of preparation and groundwork and making sure that okay well you know what I don't really want to teach this class every week maybe I'll just do it every every two weeks because I know I have this money coming in from my resources that I sell that I license or I have um, some income coming in from the language testing Mm -hmm. that I do or I've got some advertising revenue from the podcast ha 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 so these are some things that we can think about and, and it's a process and it takes time. But yeah, that's what I would say with that. Exactly. That's the, that's the beauty of it for me. And like I was on mat leave when I started my business and my daughter's still not full time in school, expecting a second child. And it's kind of like that stage in your life where I personally still want to work. I want to teach. And I think it's a great time for me to slowly build my business but it's also good that I can set my own schedule and still do the things with my family that I want to do and spend the time with my daughter and you know that really really suits this current lifestyle I have and it helps me set up my future um, as like a full-time teacher entrepreneur which is the goal yeah definitely there's definitely like a lot of uh, a lot of ways you can approach your business now you are at a stage where you can have time for yourself and you know plan your days and your week according to that. And I can do that and have time with my family. So yeah, there's just a lot of advantages, but we, we know we've talked about the prices we pay, right. And, Mm -hmm. and all that, all the costs it can have. Exactly. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So as we mentioned before, you know, these are just a few things that we've learned and we're now going to speak to Kate and Ian, who are going to share a little bit about their experiences. So let's go over to our interview today with Kate and Ian.
All right, Kate, Ian, thank you for joining us to share a little bit more about creating your own business and some fundamentals that teachers can start to consider for their own businesses. Um, it's great to have Kate back for the third time. Yeah. <laughs> And um, we just want to give our listeners a little taste of our upcoming webinar series, as well as some considerations you may need to make when setting up your own online teaching business. So who better to talk about that than the two experts here? Absolutely. (laughs) I've learned a huge amount from them, and I'm sure our listeners can Mm -hmm. too. So um, Kate, obviously, our listeners have heard a lot about you, and they're going to hear even more. But Ian, it's your first time here as our guest. So could you maybe tell us a little bit about your journey in ESL and teacher training so far? Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Um, Yeah, I I started off uh, much the same with, well, a little bit similar to Kate in kind of how we actually met was as an ESL teacher in South Korea. I think I went out there in 2007 and left end of 2011. So I think I was there for about four years, four and a half years or something in the end. Um, And uh, that sort of started me off on a crazy path of my life where I went from living in Korea to Australia to be a carpenter and then moving back to England where I became a registered social worker working for uh, with children. Um, and then I moved to Switzerland where I live now with, uh, with my wife and my family. And, um, I have the luxury of being a a stay at home dad with a five-year-old and a three-year-old. Um, and that's kind of where the English anywhere partnership came from is that I was, uh, bored (laughs) and I'd refreshed Facebook so many times that I decided to create an Instagram account because I just needed a bit more excitement in my life. Sounds very and, familiar. Yeah, <laughs> and and with that account opening, Kate then contacted me and said, "Hey, I've got this uh, this business idea. Do you want in?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's go for it." Wonderful. And uh, and the rest is history. It is. Awesome. It's really cool, and it's a very similar journey. I also yeah. did four years in Korea, and oh, did you? <laughs> great people. And I I was there in 2011. You left in 2011. Maybe our paths yeah. crossed. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe at the airport yeah. we waved each other on the planes. You know, maybe, yeah. maybe. <laughs> and, and that's also why I started my Instagram account just on an app leave, and then that Daniel and I started talking, and let's start the yeah. podcast together. And yeah, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how these things kind of come about, yeah. right? With uh, with no real plan, but yeah. but then you end up in this this whole new world. Um, yeah, absolutely. You, and yeah. you kind of learn along the way, which is kind of what we we want to help our listeners with. Um, a lot of our listeners are trying to maybe take their first steps into creating their own business for teaching online. Mm-hmm. So I know it's hard to kind of name that, but what would you guys say is like, are the first steps that teachers should take before anything else? I think Ian should answer this one too. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> Well, I mean, I'm more of the the sort of the tech person. So Kate's mm-hmm. Kate's been far more the business strategy, and I've been the person to work out how you actually do that, mm-hmm. and and sort of formulate it all. So I think the the number one thing that we always start with with uh, with our programs and stuff, it's all about the niche. It's about knowing who you're talking to. If you don't know who you're talking to, you can't really create an effective product you can't create an effective website you can't create an effective social media and you can't create um a sort of overall business strategy so the the number one thing is to really pinpoint who it is you're talking to and then everything else can then be built around that that sort of avatar that that person that you're you're focusing on Mm -hmm. um yeah, we, we always have the thing, I'm sure Kate maybe mentioned this in previous episodes about teachers, they come in and they they want to, they can help everyone, they want to teach everyone. Right. So that's great, but you can't create every product ever to help yeah. every single human being. You've got to have a starting point. And uh, so that would be my my very first step is work out who it is you're talking to because then, yeah, the rest that's falls great. in place. Yeah, that makes total sense. Not the easiest thing, but yeah. (laughs) It's really difficult. And again, I've been through this journey and obviously having worked with you guys, I I learned a huge amount when it comes to this niche. And and even now I'm finding myself, I'm sure you guys are too, that people come to me all the time, old friends or colleagues, hey, Daniel, like, where do I get started? What do I do? So this is kind of why we decided to to deliver these sessions and to kind of give you guys an opportunity to to try to 
you know, get, get a little bit of guidance on figuring this out because, uh, you know, <laughs> figuring out a niche is, is huge. Um, and the, the next big thing as well is, is social media. And a lot of people, including myself, I'm so guilty of it. Um, even now is consistency and, and posting content, not just posting content, but posting the right content to communicate mm-hmm. with your audience. So where should teachers start when it comes to social media, Kate? And again, I know we have a, a real amazing tool and some great things we're going to share in the webinar, but what are the, what are the starting points perhaps? Yeah, I think, I think when you're starting you know, and the social media is hard, it's, it's not as easy to show up consistently every single day. Mm-hmm. I think when you start doing it and you see the benefits of it, it becomes a lot easier. But especially at the very beginning, when you're like, you're like, I, I feel like I've been posting and posting and posting and posting and like what no, nothing is happening. Um, it's hard. It's hard to keep that motivation going. But um, I think so for me, you know, we start out as as teachers, our, we, our idea of content creation is is educational. We're like, OK, we'll just go out and we'll educate. And this is this is just, you know, I will I will show people a new word or I'll show them a new phrasal verb or an expression, whatever. Um, and, and really that is valuable in one way. It is valuable for you to get used to the, to the camera and to get used to getting on camera daily and regularly making time for this, you know, whether you're the kind of person who needs to batch your content or if you're very much like me where I have just always kind of made things on the fly when I'm inspired, but luckily for me, I'm inspired relatively often enough that, that it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but really at, at that point, then once you are good at the camera thing and once you're, well, let's, let's, let's say good because I don't think anyone ever says this to themselves, I'm good <laughs> now, now I can do something else. Mm-hmm. But the idea of like, you know, once you're relatively comfortable on camera mm-hmm. to then try other things, because unfortunately the word of the day style content is not the thing that will get you clients. Yes. So if you just keep doing them, nothing will change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah, really and it, it, that's, one, that's one thing that, I, that attracted me to your page as well. Early on when I started mine was exactly that, that it was original, different content. And then when I started looking into more of your uh, content focused for teachers, um, yeah, definitely that, like this is not getting you anywhere. And that's exactly how I felt. Mm-hmm. And especially our pet peeve is the don't say, Posts, (laughs) (sighs) right? Which, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll talk. We can talk more about that. And I believe we'll get into that in the (laughs) webinar. But Dan and I have mentioned things like this before as well. And it's like kind of, uh, you know, preying on your students kind of thing, their insecurities, right? Um, Right. Now, having said that, it's all about mindset, it seems, right? Your Mm -hmm. mindset and the learner's mindset and how crucial do you think that it, the mindset is when it comes to keeping motivated, uh, both to show up on Instagram, on social media, and to s- stick with your business? What do you guys think about that? Uh, I can't say much for the motivation on on Instagram because anybody that knows me, I mean, I somehow ended up with two Instagram pages and barely post to either of them. Um, mm-hmm. I guess because I have the fullback that Kate is so good with her Instagram, but. Exactly. I, At the very beginning, I I was posting on a daily basis and I was loving it. I had a really great audience. I had really high engagement rates and um, but I wasn't making the sales. You know, they just wasn't transferring that way. And it became more and more of a challenge every day to think of something to post because I was still, you know, Kate and I have made these same mistakes. This is how we learn. Right. We we were doing word of the day and every day I'm like, okay, so what's another idiom I can do? What's another mm-hmm. phrase? Over? What's another Britishism? Yeah. And you run out of the good material. And when you run out of the good material, cause you've already done them, then you start to lose that motivation. Um, I think, I think the, the biggest thing that people need to remember when it comes to social media is that it is a tool for your business, right? You are not there right. to become an Instagram star. Mm-hmm. Some people maybe that is their goal and you can monetize social media, of course, but that's not really what most teachers are motivated to what their sort of end goal is. So it's, it's more about um, remembering that it's, it's effectively your business card, right? And Mm -hmm. when you are using it in a really proactive way to promote your services and your businesses and to really then start to see a return on that, the motivation kind of kicks in. 
Mm-hmm. And it's it's because it's then it's got a point. If mm-hmm. you're just doing a word of the day, there's no point to it. So how do you stay motivated mm-hmm. when so you start? True when you start using it to really talk about your business, which we're all passionate about our businesses and we love what we're doing, then that motivation sort of comes in a bit more naturally, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So what, another thing we're going to talk about a little bit more in the webinar is this term passive income. It's kind of like a, a dirty word in some ways, but we hear nonstop <laughs> about this. So many people say, you know, people tell me, oh, I want to do this. I want to have passive income. Pass- is it a myth? Is it a fallacy? What are your thoughts on this? What do we really feel is the is the true term? Is it somewhere in the middle? What do you think? I'll go ahead and grab that one if that's okay with you, mm-hmm. Ian. So for me, like passive income, I think when you when you think of Instagrammers and it's, you know, the idea of either creating a course or making money from posts and things like this, it becomes a lot more passive. And, you know, they're sitting there on the beach and they're drinking margaritas <laughs> and all of that. I'm an educator and I love I love educating. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And so for me, I'm like, I don't want to just be sitting on the beach, but I'm also a parent. I have two small kids. So does Ian. Uh, we created our business with the goal of helping more people, but doing it in a way that also helps our families and our, you know, like the, we had to create something that kind of went outside of the standard one-on-one because we weren't there. I wasn't there looking for one-on-ones. Ian wasn't looking for one-on-ones. He was looking for a passion project he was looking for something that can light him up which I'm fairly certain this this became that uh, so for me the the idea of passive income is creating something once and then helping people with it more mm-hmm. so you know Ian and I we've got products we've got courses and programs and challenges and all of this stuff that we created over the last couple of years that is still being bought by people And that to me is passive income because not only can I stand behind it, I know it's helpful, I know it's educational, but it's also something, you know, it inspires me when somebody messages me even two years later saying, I just saw this, this training, this was amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I I had no idea about this thing and you just taught me that. And I'm like, cool, because I was doing laundry. Right. Yeah, I'm not yeah. on the beach drinking, <laughs> but I was doing laundry and that works for me. It's <laughs> amazing. So, so passive income is totally doable, especially as teachers. We are educators. We are the best of the course creators. I mean, I imagine, you know, my husband is a very skilled man. He's an engineer. He's an environmental engineer. He's very, very skilled, but he is not a teacher. Right. So he could create something, a course for people all about environmental engineering but he's not a teacher. Whereas the stuff that we create, yeah. that's, that's truly going to be helping people and English specifically languages, of course, as well, online languages, this is the way of the future. So, you mm-hmm. know, creating something that, that will help people for years down the line. I mean, that's the dream. Yeah, that's true. It's not like a single use course, no, right? Not a you can be use. about it. Yeah. 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 One-on-ones are single use. Mm -hmm. These courses that we create are not single use and they can continue to give value to people even while we're doing the most mundane things of parenting, you know, Mm -hmm. doing laundry and and cooking something at the house. I'll have people tell me that they were watching our webinars while baking a birthday cake for their kid. And I'm like, because I've learned information from other people while cooking, while cleaning my bathroom, I'll have my laptop open and I'm like scrubbing the tub. So I love the idea that people are doing that with our information. And then hopefully they can also create something that Mm -hmm. they can then do the same thing. And someone can be learning from them while scrubbing their tub. Great. And that's just some of what, I guess, what we're going to touch on uh, during our webinar that's coming up soon. Um, Would you guys like to maybe give a a bit of a quick rundown of other things you're going to mention? Um, on June 13th for our listeners? Just so we can yeah, wrap it I mean, up. yeah. So for me, the, you know, there's so many things that we can mention. We're talking about um, niching down and the real kind of content that, that we can be making that's not word of the day. Mm-hmm. I think if that's something that your people are struggling with, I'm happy to give as many answers as I can, mm-hmm. um, as well as just inspiration. Um, so, I mean, that for me is huge. And then uh, we can also answer um, how we created mm-hmm. our, our most recent English course, uh, how we created that, 
mm-hmm. with two kids each in the house during <laughs> lockdown. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> because <laughs> that's, that's exactly what we did. It was October 2020. And we got a business opportunity from a Fortune 500 company in India. And they said, we need this, 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 this. And we said, we can create all of those things for you. And they went, great. We'll see you in one month. And we both had two kids in the house. We were like, okay, what are we doing? I was, I was homeschooling my first grader at the time. Um, And we, we nailed it. And we're still, still also making money from that, which is, you know, the the point. (laughs) Incredible. This is great. And, you know, just, just on that note, you know, the conversations that we have that we all know when we were in that position, when we were just starting out, there were so many things we didn't know. And there's still Mm -hmm. things we're learning all the time. And Mm -hmm. conversations I have, people say to me, that makes so much sense. I I never realized that. Or, (laughs) oh, actually, why did I never think of that? And again, you can't know what you haven't tried or what you don't know yet. So this is a really good opportunity, hopefully for everyone to to join us and, 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 you know, learn about these simple strategies, these simple things you can do, maybe just Mm -hmm. maybe shifting the mindset slightly or just having a look at things with a fresh set of uh, of eyes. Um, And it should hopefully really get you focused on what you can deliver on, how you can connect with your learners, what content's going to work, how you can build those connections and not focus on maybe selling or pushing something, but more how you can have those genuine conversations, make that genuine connection, and then hopefully build not just clients or students, but also build a viable and sustainable business like we have tried to do. Hopefully I've encapsulated that quite well, Kate, right? You did. (laughs) I I learned this from you guys. So thank you. (laughs) That's great. Well, uh, just to wrap it up, uh, how can our listeners get in touch with both of you guys if they have any questions about both the webinar but, or, or your other products for teachers and students? Yeah, amazing. So I am. I have two Instagram pages. Um, my teacher teaching teachers page, my teachers page is called balancing underscore teachers. And I've also got a page specifically to business English, which is english.anywhere.de underscore Kate. Ian is the same. He's english.anywhere.de underscore Ian. And then he has a teacher's page as well. It's called tech.for.teachers. And he shows up there every once in a while. Every once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) I'm there every damn day. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, I hope everyone's enjoyed this uh, small insight into what we're going to talk much more about on June 13th. So please do go ahead and register while you still can. Um, I say, unfortunately, but fortunately, we have been able to move things back a little. So it gives you more time to register, reach out to me, Faye, Kate, Ian, ask any questions that you might have. Uh, We'll be really happy to obviously, you know, give you the information you need. And we'll see you in the webinar on the 13th of June. Um, It is, like we said, just $5 to join. So it's really, you know, an amazing opportunity to just invest a tiny amount and get so much value out of it. And we can also hopefully give you some steps that you're going to need to get started with your own teaching business. Fabulous. Can't wait. (laughs) So Kate and Ian, thanks again for taking the time to share so many tips with us. If you want to sign up for the webinar happening on June 13th and have a chance to really go deep into this topic of creating your own online business with all four of us, make sure you head on over to our website, esl-talk.com. Yes, so much value there because you're getting four of us who've all gone through this uh, experience. We've all gone through this process together. So you'll be able to ask us any questions you might have, where to get started, et cetera. So there's a lot of um, value for you in that session. As always, um, please do get in touch if you have any questions at Instagram, ESL Talk Podcast. Email, you can get in touch with us at esltalkpodcast at gmail.com. You can, of course, visit our website to access all of our previous episodes from every season for free. And you can also find out more about the teacher webinar about building your own online business with Kate and Ian. Or go to our Instagram, which is at ESL Talk Podcast. Don't forget that as a patron, you can join your first webinar absolutely free. And your membership starts from just $3 a month. And finally, you can join us on Instagram individually. You can find me at learning with Faye. Faye is F-E-Y. Or at I'm Daniel Teacher. So that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you found it quite interesting to learn about our insights and we hope to see you for our webinar on June 13th and we'll see you next week for another brand new episode.